I think it's time to call this meeting to order. And um, and so, uh, Jackie, would you please call the roll? Yes. Uh, Margaret Clemens. Here. D. Owens. Here. Vicki Sorensen. Here. And Mary Beth and Skip are not able to attend tonight. So we have three members and a quorum. Okay. Um, would you be so kind as to introduce the evidence? Sure. I uh, ask that the following be introduced. The Monroe County Comprehensive Land Use Plan as adopted and amended. The Monroe County Zoning Ordinances as adopted and amended. The Monroe County Subdivision Control Ordinance as adopted and amended. The Board of Zoning Appeals Rules of Procedure as adopted and amended and the case is advertised and scheduled for a hearing on tonight's agenda. So move. Second. Okay. Uh, D. Owens. Yes. Vicki Thornson. Yes. And Margaret Clemens. Yes. Okay. Introduction of evidence passes three to zero. Is there a motion to approve the agenda? I so move, move to approve. Second. <laughs> Vicki Sorensen. Yes. Margaret Clemens? Yes. E. Owens? Yes. Okay, now are there any minutes here that anyone would be comfortable passing? I'm happy to do October the 6th and December the 1st. And, but Dee said she will not uh, be here. So I think um, we should, if there could be a move to continue this if someone would be so kind to our next meeting. I move to continue to the next meeting. Yeah, I can second that. Okay. Um, Margaret Clemens? Yes. Dee Owens? Yes. Vicki Sorensen? Yes. Okay. So okay, we, yeah, we, we wouldn't have had three votes on any of those. So administrative business, there's none. We begin, uh, there's no, old business or is there administrative business Jackie no no okay um there's no old business and we're moving to our first item on the agenda of new business and that concerns VAR-22-2A dash dash and VAR-22-2B uh the first being the Dunca I don't know if I'm saying that correctly or Duncha side yard setback variance to chapter 804 and the Dunja building buildable area, 15% uh, cent slope variance to chapter 804 concerning a property at 5650 South Nature Trail Drive in Van Buren Township. So um, I believe Mr. Myers is here and ready to go over this uh, request with us, this petition. Yes, I am here. Can you hear me okay? Yes. yes. Okay, um, my connection is a little bit unstable, so I might turn off my video, but uh, we shall see. Okay, so this is the uh, Dunka um, side yard setback variance from chapter 804 and the buildable area 15% slope variance from chapter 804. Um, it's located at 5650 South Nature Trail Drive, Van Buren Township, section 25. Uh, the purpose for these two variances is the petitioner is proposing to extend their existing rear upper deck that is attached to the home. Um, they're expecting to extend it approximately eight feet, um, and they will also be replacing the lower deck with a poured concrete um, patio type um, design. Um, upon the submission of a building permit for this work done to be done on the structure, um, the planning staff uh, found out that the structure of the home is actually um, within the side yard setback, which is a required 15 feet in the um, state residential zone. Um, this house was built before uh, the current owners, the petitioner, uh, were living here. So, um, <clears throat> and that was in 2011. Um, so whenever there is a structure that is pre-existing non-conforming, if you will, to one of the setbacks or buildable area, um, any type of work that is expanding the footprint or any work that is being done onto the home uh, typically triggers the need for variances. Um, since the structure was built in 2011, um, it is not technically considered pre-existing non-conforming under Chapter 803, um, so it's not eligible for the 25% expansion allowance. 
Um, the new upper deck will measure 352 square feet and the um, original upper deck was about 218 square feet. And that second number was an approximate uh, measurement made by planning staff um, using the uh, maps and um, GIS softwares. <clears throat> the second variance to this petition, the buildable area, um, occurs in the fact that um, the uh, extension of the deck will encroach into an area that has 15% or more in slope. Um, so um, we have the side yard setback and the buildable area variances here for this um, new deck um, remodel, essentially. Okay, so going through some maps here, um, location map in the top left corner of your screen. And then we have the slope map here um, in the larger portion of the screen. Um, you'll note that uh, the majority of the uh, rear area behind the home is over the 15% um, designation. Um, and you can also see here the northern corner of the home um, really kind of gets really close to the property line um, here. Um, we can see the exact measurement in a moment when we get to the site plan. Um, it's also uh, in a platted subdivision. Um, it's listed as, I believe, lot number six in the McAfee Woods subdivision. Here we have the petitioner submitted um, certified site plan. Um, <clears throat> you'll note here that the home does encroach into that 15% 15 foot um, side yard setback. Um, it, right now it sits about 2.24 feet away from the property line. Um, here is some construction plans for the project uh, regarding the uh, deck. And we can come back to this if we have any questions about the specifics. Um, essentially, uh, extension of eight feet, um, a new stairway, and then new concrete pad underneath. All right, moving on to some pictures. Um, so here is the rear of the house. You can see the existing deck here, and then the ga uh, gradual grade um, or slope downward um, this direction to the uh, continuing to the rear of the home. And um, just another view of how that grade uh, uh, gradually declines um, and is classified as the 15% um, from the maps. More pictures here. You can see the um, deck again in this uh, left picture. And then on the right, uh, just kind of an idea of, of, of a better idea of how that slope looks um, coming from the south of the house. All right, so here we have the letter to the Board of Zoning Appeals uh, provided by the petitioner, uh, essentially stating that they're asking for both the side yard setback for the 15 feet, as well as the slope variance. All right, which brings me to staff's recommendation for this variance petition. Um, overall, staff recommends approval of both variances, citing that any new development, construction, um, onto the existing family residence would first require a side yard setback variance due to its already built nature within that setback. And then also citing um, that um, the existing deck structure would first require a buildable area variance due to its location um, being already within the buildable area or non-buildable area, excuse me. I will not take any questions. Ms. Nestor Jellin has a question. I'm sorry, Margaret, I didn't mean to raise my hand. Oh. I don't have any questions. Okay. Do members of the Board of Zoning Appeals have questions? Ms. Owens? Thank you, ma'am. Um, yeah, I, looking at that picture, I believe it was photo six. Uh, I see that the slope is uh, the one just before that one, Drew. Yeah, well, it shows yeah, the side view there. There you go. Um, it's... It, it, it may be the uh, slope, but they're not asking to do anything very major that I can see. I mean, it's pushing it out a little bit. Yeah, it'll be a little bit on a slope, but it's not huge. So I, I, uh, I just wondered if there was any other comment on that. As From far the as the staff's perspective. Uh -huh. Sure. So the way that the slope uh, is measured um, from a buildable area standpoint um, is I believe it's uh, 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 measured over 50 feet 
Um, and if the percent of that 50 feet, the, the length of it um, counts as that percentage, then that's what it comes up as, especially with the uh, maps, the GIS maps. Um, and those squares, those blocks that you can see, um, or pixels, if you will, um, those are fairly large. Um, so the resolution isn't perfect. Um, as you can note here, it looks like, according to this map at least, that the home itself is, um, you know, very much, uh, very far into the uh, steep sloped area that's over 15%. Right, so, right. And that's okay. what we generally go off of. Okay, thank you. Do other members of the Board of Zoning Appeals have questions for staff? If not, we can turn to the petitioner or the petitioner's representative. And if you're here, um, I think that the technical staff will unmute you and will swear you in. Uh, this is uh, Joshua Duncan. Oh, would you please uh, kindly uh, raise your right hand, state your name, and then uh, if you could do that and swear to tell the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. I, Joshua Duncan. Swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Okay, great. Thank you so much, Mr. Dunka. How can we help you tonight? I just, uh, so our family would like to extend this deck, as you can see the, in the, the appeals letter. And as one of the members had said, um, if you look at the, the slope on the back, it's where we're extending the, the bottom portion of the deck is maybe three to four feet out. The upper portion is going out eight feet. So it's, it's pretty flat at that one point. Now the other the other variance is the side setback, and I understood the rules for that. And I, I didn't know, and I, I talked to the planning office about this. I, I was kind of curious on how this this property even got approved to be built that way, if this is built in 2011. So we did not get a, a survey done prior to building this house because we bought houses before. We've never had to get a survey, so I didn't didn't make sense to me to get a survey. So we didn't understand why that was an issue, but. We understood the rules, and that's why we we decided to go forward with this variance process. So we we just really want this variance done so we can extend our deck to pretty much enjoy the outside. I don't know if you saw the backyard; it looks very beautiful back there. And our deck is very small. We have four people in our family, and we we have uh, we we have quite quite a few get-togethers, and so we'd like to be able to spend some time out there during the summer. Well, you do have a beautiful lot and it makes your heart feel really happy to be in Indiana when you can see a backyard like that. So I wonder if there are members of the plan or of the Board of Zoning Appeals who have questions for Mr. Dunka. Okay, and uh, Mr. Dunka, are there other um, members that you that would like to speak to the BZA to address this or is... Um, is that it for your testimony tonight? That was it for my testimony. I don't think any of my neighbors they they talked to me and they they didn't have any issues with it. But and, and I they asked they didn't they didn't seem any reason to call in. Okay, well, well we still must certify. But thank you, Mr. Dunka, for coming in tonight. And I'd like to uh, ask the public: Are there members of the public who are here either on Zoom or on telephone who would like to speak in favor of this petition? If so, uh, please raise your hand on Zoom or press star nine on your telephone to be recognized. And if staff could tell me if that happens, I'd be grateful. I don't see anyone. Thank you. And are there members of the public present who would like to um, testify against this petition? If so, please raise your hand on Zoom or press star nine on the telephone to be recognized. Okay, thank you. We bring it back then to the Board of Zoning Appeals and if there's a motion on this for either further discussion or a motion. I'll make a motion. Okay. On uh, case number VAR-22-2A, side yard setback from chapter 804 at 5650 South Nature Trail Drive, I move to uh, approve the side yard uh, setback uh, on VA-22-2B, buildable area, 15% slope from chapter 804. I move to approve. I would second that. Okay. I'll go ahead and call the roll. Um, 
the motion is on the Dunka side yard setback variance to chapter 804 in the Dunka buildable area, 15% slope variance to chapter 804 for a 1.01 acre parcel at 5650 South Nature Trail Drive. It's been moved and seconded, and I will call the roll. Uh, D. Owens? Yes. Mary Beth or Margaret Clements? Yes. Vicki Sorensen? Yes. Okay, motion is approved three to zero. Okay, thank you, Mr. Dunka, for coming tonight and for getting your property in compliance. We appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you, thank you panel members. Have a good, good fun time on your new deck. All right, and have a good evening. Thanks. Okay, uh, we're moving on to items three and four on the agenda. Item three is VAR 22 3A. This is Brummett Front Yard Setback Variance to Chapter 833. And item four is VAR 22 3B, Brummett Side Yard Setback Variance to Chapter 833 concerning. Uh, a property at 1320 South Smith Road. And um, should I, do I need to read the parcel numbers? No, oh, okay. no. Okay, great. So Ms. Cresselius, if you would be so kind as to lead us through this, we'd be grateful. Absolutely, thank you, Margaret. So a, these are two variances, a front yard and a side yard setback. Um, the owners are, this is uh, the owner's Heather Brummett. It's currently zoned RS 3.5 Pro 6 under the Monroe County Urbanizing Area. So the property is located in Perry Township, Section 11 off of Smith Road. It is currently a residential use, a single family residential use. So the petitioner, this variance request has been triggered by a residential permit application for the existing single family residence. Um, the existing home is pre-existing non-conforming structure um, due to its encroachment into the front yard setback. Um, so the required front yard setback from Smith Road is 60 feet from center line. And additionally, there is a side yard setback of 12 feet for um, asterisk there, the, the current side yard setback is eight feet um, for as the house is existing, which is not an encroachment. Um, so the petitioner is proposing to increase the residential space of the home by approximately 500 square feet. Um, that would also decrease the size of the existing deck. Um, so kind of swapping area from deck to residential enclosed space. Um, the second would be that under the permit, they would be repairing the roof. Um, apparently, you know, it was a poor roof design that has caused issues for them. And in order to fix the design of the roof, the height of the structure will increase by four feet. Um, so under chapter 833 zoning, um, a the standard setback, side setback for this zone for a single story structure is eight feet. Anything beyond a single story, um, so a second story increase in structure would require an additional four feet to the side setback, which would be the required, which, which would make the side yard setback um, a 12 feet requirement. So as of right now, the home is, exists, uh, exists for the front yard setback, um, is approximately 45 feet from the center line of Smith Road. And the side yard is, um, the petitioner stated it is that it's approximately 12 feet. Um, Elevate GIS shows the house a little closer. Um, of course, this is an approximation of the aerial imagery and the parcel boundaries when we use Elevate. So it is hard to tell without a survey or a plot plan. From what the measurement on Elevate GIS shows approximately seven feet. Um, our original recommendation did include for the side yard setback that there would be um, a requirement to certify, to provide a certified plot plan showing the location of the home specifically for the side yard setback. Um, that would be on the Northern side. Uh, after the site visit, staff does believe that the home um, 
does meet approximately 12 feet, but it cannot be confirmed necessarily without a plot, a certified plot plan. So this is the structure, how, where they'll be adding onto their existing home. Back, this would be a change in space, which is currently deck. This will be the extension and um, the roof line will change. So this is the right here on the right, the small photo. This is Smith Road in the front yard setback. So the home is fairly close, does not meet that 60 foot front yard um, setback from center line. And then the large photo is this northern side yard setback, which um, staff upon site visit, you know, pacing it, it does appear to be approximately 12 feet. So I'll bring that back to the recommendation. We do recommend approval for the front yard setback from chapter 833 and approval with condition for the side yard setback from chapter 833. Um, we leave it up to the BZA to consider whether this uh, condition will be needed or not um, for the side yard setback. Does anybody have any questions? So Vicki or Dee, do you have any questions for Ms. Cresselius? I guess I have a question. So if they get this certified plot plan, what does that establish? It does, it's just showing where the house is? It would provide, yes, the accurate location of the property boundary. Um, I should have noted this is in one of the oldest subdivisions we probably have in the county called Rolling Hills subdivision. So it's a very old plat and the boundaries are probably really only well known because of fence lines and tree lines. Um, so at the time of, of filing this variance, you know, we did believe that they were much closer to the setback. Um, now we're not so sure, but without more information, we wouldn't necessarily be able to say, you know, if that, if that, if the variance for a side yard setback would even be needed or not. Which to me would help if they would ever sell the property if we would know exactly where everything is where now it's kind of like you said fence and tree lines mm -hmm. okay thank you okay if the petitioner or the petitioner's representative is here and would like to address the board of zoning appeals uh either um ms brummett or mr carter um would you please indicate your presence Hi, uh, this is Heather Brummett. Okay, thank you. If you uh, would be so kind as to state your name and raise your right hand and s uh, state that you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Hi, my name is Heather Brummett. I swear to tell the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Thank you, Heather. If um, we'd like to hear from you, what are you doing? And uh, why don't you talk to us about your uh, cozy home? Well, uh, thank you very much. Um, we love our 1950s home. Um, as uh, you could probably tell from public record, we've owned our home for 15 years. Um, one thing I did want to know uh, was that we had letters submitted from um, our neighbor that is directly on the north side, both of them, um, and the one on the south side. So our three closest neighbors all sit, submitted letters of support um, for us to upgrade our home. Um, and so long story short, um, we have been saving money and uh, trying to get new siding, new windows, and um, a new roof that's much needed for our home. And um, as you can't really tell from the pictures, but um, back in the 70s, there was an addition added and the roof line goes directly into the side of the house of the part with the new addition. And um, so, you know, it's always like, well, if we're gonna update the roof, we should do it right. And the way that it's designed, it's, it's problematic because the, the water from the 1950s portion of the house would literally run into the side of the, of the 1970s addition right into the wall. And so um, in, instead of, you know, redoing our roof, as it is and it being a bad design and waiting for it to leak again, uh, we thought we would go ahead and 
and redo the roof correctly off the back. And um, so we submitted a building plan. Uh, at first, we were just going to update our attic, and they said we couldn't do it because our house was non-compliant. And so we said, well, we'll pivot and we'll, we won't redo the attic. We'll just add some space on the back because our house is um, quite small and we have a child. Um, and so um, we then came up with another plan to, hey, we'll just add space on the back, thinking that it was a problem with the front of the house being as close to Smith Road as it is. And then um, the, the planning department said, well, actually you can't make any updates until we get a variance and so um we're here today to to ask that you please kindly um consider approving our variance um we're, we're not going to do anything to the front or the sides of our home we just really just are trying to update it make it energy efficient so our 1950s windows don't uh, blow in cold air in the winter and um and then fix it so we don't have um uh, potential leaks in the future well, thank you so much, Ms. Brummett. That makes perfect sense. And uh, that you do have a beautiful home. So thank you for talking with us about your goals. And I would like, is there anyone else from your team who would like to uh, speak to the Board of Zoning Appeals or is that your uh, petitioner's tes testimony? That's our petitioner's testimony. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So I would like to turn now to the members of the public. Is there anyone present who is here to speak in opposition to this petition? If so, please raise your hand on Zoom. And if you're calling in by telephone, press star nine to be recognized. Okay, we don't see anybody. So we're moving to um, members of the public who are here to speak in opposition to this petition. If you're here to speak in opposition, please raise your hand on Zoom or press star nine to, uh, on the telephone to be recognized. Okay, I bring it back to the members of the Board of Zoning Appeals for further discussion and or a motion. I can do a motion. Okay, thank you, Ms. Sorensen. On case number VAR-22-3A, dash dash front yard setback from chapter 833, I move to approve. On case number VAR-22-3B, dash side yard setback from chapter 833, I move to approve with conditions to require a certified plot plan showing the location of the home, specifically showing the northern side yard setback encroachment at 1320 South Smith Road. I second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded to approve the AR-22-3A dash dash front yard setback from Chapter 833, the AR-22-3B dash side yard setback from Chapter 833 with the condition that they re we require a certified site plan showing the location of the home, specifically showing the northern side yard setback encroachment. I will call the roll. Margaret Clemens? Yes. Vicki Sorensen? Yes. D. Owens? Yes. Okay, it's been approved three to zero. Okay, well, uh, have fun with that, Ms. Brummett, and I, we look forward to driving by your improvements. So uh, have fun with your family and protect that roof. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Okay, so we're, I think this is our final case, right? We're moving right along. So uh, the la final case in... Um, Sorry, Margaret, there's one more after oh, this. One more after this. Okay, well, we're still doing very well. This is VAR-22-4, uh, front yard setback. Um, to from chapter 804, a very, oh, I'm sorry. I got a little mixed up. This is VAR-22-4, Rex Fish Front Yard Setback Variance to chapter 804, concerning a property at 2593 East Pedigo Bay Drive. Okay, so um, I think Mr. Myers will walk us through this case. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Yes, this one is the Rex Fish Front Yard Setback Variance of Chapter 804. 
the purposes for this variance request is that the petitioner is looking to construct a new 672 square foot detached garage on the property. Um, and the lo proposed location for that detached garage uh, would encroach 15 feet into the required 25 foot front yard setback. The property exhibits an existing 3,989 square foot single family residence with an attached garage. And um, the detached structure will be right across the driveway as we'll see here in a moment in the site plan. Um, same as the previous petitions, um, this one came through first as a building permit application and upon review by planning staff, it was determined that uh, a variance would be necessary in order to permit the uh, uh, development. Right. Again, here we have the location map in the top left corner of the screen and then the slope map here, uh, much larger. Again, uh, everywhere that you see in red is over 15% in slope and is non-buildable area. The proposed location for the detached garage structure will be right about in line with the attached garage area here, just across the driveway. In this little area here where my cursor is hovering. So there's no uh, worry for buildable area or anything else, um, just the front yard setback. Here we have the petitioner submitted um, uh, type E administrative subdivision that they went through a few years ago. Um, there was a transfer of land between their neighbors um, and it's right about in this area again where my cursor is hovering that they are proposing to build the detached garage structure. And this is just a zoom in of that area to get a better idea of the distances and what we're looking at. And then in this image, uh, we have the proposed uh, development uh, appearing uh, adjacent to or across the driveway from the existing structure, uh, approximately 36 feet uh, from the existing structure um, to the, uh, the southeast of that. And that is where the proposed structure is going. 28 feet by 24 feet uh, or approximately 672 square feet. Uh, you'll note here on this image that they're showing 10 feet from the property line and um, that is supposed to be 25 feet per the standards for the zoning district, um, the uh, suburban residential zoning district, as well as it's on the um, type E plat. Um, the property line does uh, share, or excuse me, this property line here, it's adjacent to the HOA common area. And some more details will come of that in a minute. Um, here are some aerial imagery. Uh, of the site, uh, it took some time to draw a small square here, the approximate location for the structure, just to get an idea of what it would look like. And then we have a few other images here um, of the uh, petition site. Um, it is a gated community. I was not able to get in through the gate uh, on the day that I was doing my site visits, um, but uh, these aerial images, I believe, are sufficient to show us um, how it looks um, on the property. Here we have the letter to the Board of Zoning Appeals uh, from the petitioner stating that their intention is to construct the detached garage and that they would like a 10 foot setback for a number of reasons, um, including that it would be in line with um, the houses in the area as well as uh, their own structure, um, a benefit for the aesthetics of the neighborhood and as a, um, a method to avoid cutting down a maple tree if they were to have to abide by the 25 foot front setback in that same location. Now, they also have some notes here about how they've already talked to their HOA board and their neighbors and that they have no um, issues with the proposal. Um, and following along with that, we have a few letters of support. Um, we do have one from the HOA board of the Patago Bay um, stating that they are um, in support of the uh, design and the location of the structure and then a uh, personal letter of support from their neighbors, um, Mr. Jason Cosner, um, stating his support for the location of the structure. Okay, so overall staff recommendation for this petition is actually denial, um, citing that there are no practical difficulties in that the front yard setback issue could be more effectively addressed through the further redesign or relocation of the development building or structure um, citing that um, 
there are locations on the property um, that would be suitable for the detached garage structure, perhaps at the end of the driveway or elsewhere that could still accommodate um, some of the items like uh, aesthetics, as well as uh, avoiding cutting down the uh, mature uh, maple tree. I will not take any questions. Okay, uh, do members of the BZA have questions for Mr. Myers? I have a question. Uh, can you show us where you think that it could be relocated at uh, since you're saying that it, they could do it someplace else? Yes, so planning staff uh, was thinking that um, if there is a tree that the petitioner is looking to avoid cutting and cutting down by moving this structure backward um, to accommodate the 25 foot front yard setback, uh, we were thinking at the end of the driveway uh, in this location here um, for the detached garage structure. Um, as you'll note in the slope map that there's plenty of space there um, from a buildable area standpoint, um, and it would not have to um, have this variance. Okay, thank you. Okay. I don't have any questions at this time, so um, we'd like to hear from Mr. and Ms. Fish if they're pre or their representative, if you're here, would you uh, please uh, be unmuted and identify yourself? Okay. Can you hear, Can you hear us now? Yes. And Mr. Fish, would you please raise your right hand and uh, swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I, Rex Fish, swear to tell the truth the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Okay, thank you, Mr. Fish. Yeah, why don't you uh, let us know what's going on over there? Okay, thank you very much. Um, and, and Drew's done a really nice job of, of presenting this and I appreciate that. I think that the things that are uh, most important, is, one of the things is the letter from Jason Cosner, my next door neighbor, uh, encouraging uh, you to approve the location of this uh, he is the only neighbor who will see this building directly from his home. And uh, if we move it of 25 feet back, it's doable. It's not as, it's not as uh, uh, valuable to us if we do that because there are issues with that. One is um, the tree comes down. The other is we can't go uh, directly straight back to the driveway because there's a 500 gallon propane tank buried there. So we're somewhat limited, although not totally. Um, and and as we don't have this photo, I don't think, but when we move that 25 feet back, we, we tend to infringe somewhat on our neighbor's uh, privacy in the back of their house. And the backs of our house, houses are all uh, facing the lake. So the backs of our houses are basically the, the most used part of our houses. So we prefer to not do that, to not infringe on their privacy. This is my wife, Melinda. Hi, hey, I'm sorry we weren't here when you came, Drew, to- um, Ms. Uh, Mrs. Fish, would you please raise your uh, right hand, state your name and swear to tell the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. I'm Melinda Fish, swear to tell the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Thank you. Okay. Um, we missed a Drew. We were at our grandson's uh, graduation from military down in Georgia. So um, we weren't here when he, you know, wanted to come in. But I have planted, you know, where he suggested maybe behind their driveway. Um, we, we are very tree conscious. We've planted what, 30 trees here. And in that area, it doesn't show it on the photo, but it, this is the third year of um, I planted 10 beautiful uh, hemlock or arborvitae. arborvitae trees back there. So um, I'd hate to cut those down. It's kind of a wildlife area back there. You know, uh, there's an eagle's nest back there by the lake and there's fox and stuff run through. And I think kind of the neighbors like to stay away from the lake as far as we can. Um, one other thing that I don't think is terribly obvious is the lot line that we're uh, discussing is uh, over 200 feet from the road. And, and the, all of the area between the lot line and the road is common area, which is not 
not buildable, never can be built on, uh, and, and it will never be used for anything other than just being grass and trees. So it's not like we're going to be encroaching on a neighbor of some sort. There is no neighbor there. Thank you, Mr. and Mrs. Fish. Well, um, I'm going to now, uh, do, do other members of the Board of Zoning Appeals have questions for Mr. and Mrs. Fish? No, thanks. I think I heard what I need. Okay. And so I'd like to turn it to members of the public. If you are here to speak in favor of this petition, please raise your hand on Zoom or press star nine on your telephone to be recognized. Okay, if you're here in opposition to this uh, petition, please raise your hand on Zoom or press star nine on your phone. Okay, I turn it back to members of the Board of Zoning Appeals. And I have uh, one comment that I would like to uh, say. It was obvious to me through the photos of the property that, um, that you know, the additional structure might uh, harm the enjoyment of the property because it might encroach on their view from their windows and having it aligned with the, um, it seems to me that there are some economical advantages at both and environmental advantages to have it aligned with the door of their garage as they propose. I, and I also am impressed myself by the fact that the Architectural Review Board and the HOA and the neighbors uh, seem to think that this is um, a good siding for this, uh, for this uh, uh, structure. So uh, that being said, I'd like to uh, turn back to other members of the Board of Zoning Appeals and see if they have any uh, questions or statements or thoughts on this or if there's a motion. Ms. Owens? Um, uh, perfectly said, Madam. Um, I, uh, listening to uh, the petitioners and looking at everything, I understand why staff recommends denial, and I generally go with staff's staff on denial. But uh, it, this makes sense from a living perspective, and, and I think that's what it has to do. So, thank you. Thank you. And Ms. Sorensen, do you have any comments or questions or a motion? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll be happy to make a motion. Okay. Okay. On case number VAR-22-4, a front yard set back from chapter 804 at 2593 East Fedigo Bay Drive, I move to approve the variance. I second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded to approve VAR-22-4, the Rex Fish Front Yard Setback Variance to Chapter 804 for property at 2593 East Pedago Bay Drive. Vicki Sorensen? Yes. Dee Owens? Yes. Margaret Clemens? Yes. Okay, okay. the motion is approved 3-0. Thank you, Mr. and Mrs. Fish. Thanks for your nice presentation and uh, good luck with your project. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Have a good evening, ladies. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Okay, we're on, I think, the final item of the agenda. And so this is item 6, ADR-22-1, and this is an appeal of the director's interpretation of a proposed use at 1238 North Lesh Road. And um, the owner is Arrow Properties. And I think Ms. Nestor Jalen, will you be leading us through this? Yes, I okay. will. Uh, Jackie, could I jump in quickly? Yep. Um, just, just for the board's uh, uh, review, this is an appeal from an administrative decision. The applicant is Arrow Properties. So Arrow Properties will be the petitioner tonight. They will present their case first. Uh, the uh, director, the staff can respond and then the uh, petitioner Arrow Properties will have a an opportunity for rebuttal. Then it goes to the board for questions. And um, the decision of the board is de novo. In other words, uh, you don't have to give any preference to 
the director's decision. It's as if this uh, information is being presented to you for the first time and you're making the decision based on your own um, assessments and evaluations. And so that's just the background that I wanted to put out there before uh, this petition, the petitioner gets started. Thank you, Mr. Schilling. Thank you, Dave. So I'll go ahead and hand it over to um, the petitioner at this time under Rules of Procedure Part B. So okay. Go ahead and turn. okay. Okay, if the petitioner is here, uh, could you please uh, state your name and raise your right hand or is it an attorney? Um, Hi, I'm Chelsea Moss. I'm the engineer for the site. Okay, well, could you, uh, Chelsea, uh, would you please raise your right hand and state your name and swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I, Chelsea Moss, swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Thank you. So uh, let's hear your presentation. Okay, good evening. Um, so I want to give a little background and actually... Um, got a little bit more information in some of the information um, Jackie included in the packet. So I will reference that a little bit. Um, my client, Arrow Properties, uh, Greg Young is the representative from that corporation, um, contacted me about this project. We had done design for a similar project down on the south side of Bloomington. Um, and that property ended up selling and um, this this property on Lesh is the proposed new site. Um, when he originally started looking for properties back in 2018, he worked with planner Carly Peterson. Um, she is no longer on staff, but he had worked with her to look at several different properties um, to make sure before purchasing that he could move his operations to these um, and have an idea of what would be involved. Um, so with this particular property, when this came up, um, we went into submitting for the use determination. Um, I submitted that with the understanding that they had had that conversation, um, that Carly had said, this site will work, we can move forward, you know, no major issues except for a few variances that he knew he would need. They were variances we had applied for on the other site as well. Um, but as far as use went, that was, we thought we were a go. Um, upon submitting, we were told that the use is not an approved use for the site um, with the use determination. And that in order to move forward, we would have to rezone this property. It's currently zoned IG. It is in the outlying property or the parcels that are outlying former city of Bloomington fringe properties. It is also in the area um, that is slated for annexation in a couple years um, back into Bloomington. So upon reviewing um, the packet, I noticed that when he had met with Carly, apparently they'd actually done a use determination at the time. Uh, mind you, this was only four years ago. If um, if I had realized that, I probably wouldn't have submitted a use determination, to be honest, because uh, if you look at that use determination, which is page 72 of the packet, um, with that use determination, all that we would be required to do is submit for a site plan filing, um, not a rezone as the most recent use determination is requiring. Um, Carly had stated um, and confirmed with Larry and Jason Eakin at the time that this would be a business or industrial center. She had included that it would have a trucking terminal, but also a general contractor, which is really the primary function of this business. The business is Young Trucking, and although um, the business was started primarily as a trucking company years ago, it currently operates as a general contractor. They do have a large truck fleet, but all of those trucks are used for construction purposes on various construction related jobs. This is not a, you know, 
big truck highway um, semi terminal, um, something you'd see in like Kihi or one of these large trucking terminals. This is a contractor. He has to store his trucks as well as his general construction equipment on site. Um, the proposed development includes a garage, maintenance facilities, fueling stations, as well as an open lot to store the equipment overnight. Most of it will be um, in use during the work days and not on site, but you're storing most of it overnight and in between jobs. So um, the, the main thing here is that what we were originally told this property could be used for, we're now tell, being told it can't be. Um, and I was actually um, glad to see that that had been recorded back in 2018 um, through, through that use determination. Is that the end of your uh, statement? Yes. Okay, well, thank you for sharing that with us. And um, do members of the Board of Zoning Appeals, can we ask questions of Ms. Moss, Mr. Schilling? Uh, yes. So do okay. members of the Board of Zoning Appeals have any questions for Ms. Moss? Um, Ms. Owens? Thank you. Um, yeah, I, I read all the materials and the, um, the previous okay was for a different property uh, and the materials are, I think, very uh, convincing that uh, truck terminal is, is what this could be viewed at is how it fits into the law, into the uh, acceptable uses and it makes sense to me that a uh, that a rezone is what should happen as opposed to this particular piece. Um, so, you know, it convinced me otherwise. I don't see how uh, I don't see how the uh, uh, director's interpretation is incorrect. Uh, um, Ms. Moss, your hand is raised, uh, and also uh, Ms. Owens uh, was speaking about that. You have a response. Uh, yes, I do. So the use determination on um, page 72, exhibit number five, is actually for this property. It is the address for the proposed land use is 1238 North Lush Road. Thank you. And uh, staff, do you have any statements about this? I do, Margaret. Um... I'd like to see if you have further questions for Chelsea, and then I can, um, okay. if it's okay with Dave, explain sure. the response. Sure. Are there, um, um, Ms. Sorensen, do you have questions for Ms. Moss? Not at this time. Thank you for asking. Yes, and I don't either. So, uh, Ms. Nestor Jellen? Okay. So, um, Dave, is it okay if I go over the response that I had prepared? in the packet, exhibit Certainly. seven? Okay. Yes. Um, and I also say that the prior use determination for 1238 North Loche, it did list business or industrial center, which is permitted under IG. But I believe that in talking with Larry prior to his retirement, um, that the other determination that it was a trucking terminal and general contractor wouldn't fit under IG because those are not permitted uses in the 833 table. Um, so in the exhibit seven of the packet starting on page 76, I do address what was utilized in order to determine that this use proposed or requested for use determination is a trucking terminal. So um, based on the following bulleted points, we looked at the use determination was for a young trunk Young Trucking Inc. Um, the use trucking terminal was decided based on the submitted site plan, which is also in the packet. It includes facilities such as tire shop and truck wash, equipment parking area, gravel pavement surface, and a fueling station. 
uh, that one of the answers on the use determination showed a number of vehicles showed 50 for young trucking, which is a significant number of vehicles. Um, there's a significantly sized outdoor gravel parking area for equipment on the site, 58,000 square feet, um, which if you look at the rest of the site plan, um, the indoor building footprints equal about 20,228. So more than double the size for outdoor storage area than would be for the building footprints. The definition for trucking terminal in 802 is a terminal facility used by a highway type property carrying vehicles, which may include truck maintenance facilities. Um, I also bring up uh, principal use and accessory use as a part of the explanation for what is being discussed as maybe a, a trucking terminal and then accessory uses for equipment storage or contractor use. So when you have a principal use on the land, it's the main use of the land, building or structure as distinguished for a subordinate or accessory use. So it's distinguished as a principal use and then you can have accessory uses within the same lot. Um, so we had assumed trucking terminal was the principal use as shown in the site plan and use determination for the property. As Chelsea mentioned, we have been working with Aero Properties and uh, Young Trucking Inc. Uh, for several years. So we have seen that they've submitted uh, 2019. We had a site at 5220 Production Drive, previously was 5200 um, and under Exhibit 4. And when it was located at 5220 Production Drive, the owner and design professional um, at that time did not appeal that the use was to be a trucking terminal. And we actually went through a variance process to um, reify the use as trucking terminal and get a, uh, they got approved for a gravel lot for heavy uh, equipment storage. Um, the business is now being located at 1238 North Loesch Road, which is zoned uh, general industrial and IG does not permit the use of trucking terminal. Um, there were two applications, 5220 production and 1238 North Loesch do not appear to be dissimilar, but yet an appeal is being sought at this location. Um, now that the use is stated, it's not being permitted. Um, so I wanna go over sort of the appeal letter, which is exhibit three. Uh, the petitioner did apply for an appeal. So we are looking at this as a way of, as Dave mentioned, de novo, uh, how we came up with the determination that it was a trucking terminal and then their appeal um, as well as an exhibit. So they had stated that the use was better classified as building trade shop in chapter 833. So a uh, building trade shop, just looking at the dictionary, it is a trade such as carpentry, bricklaying and plumbing that are essential to and chiefly practiced in connection with building construction. Uh, we didn't find that the use that they had described was specifically fitting in building trade shops and therefore again made the determination it was a trucking terminal. Um, in the appeal letter, the applicant states that equipment and personnel activities extend beyond trucks and material hauling. Notably, they do not say excludes, but other business in addition to trucks and material hauling. Uh, in the appeal letter, the applicant states they currently own 29 pieces of heavy construction equipment in addition to their trucks. As mentioned in the use determination, they state they have 50 vehicles, which could be in addition to the 29 pieces of heavy construction equipment and it supports trucking terminal as the principal use. In the appeal letter, they state trucks they operate are used for construction project purposes, not general transport, such as semi-tractor, trailer, or box trucks. And this is an important distinction because the definition for trucking terminal does not say that the use is limited to general transport, although it does list highway type vehicles. When the ordinance for trucking terminal went into effect in 2016, several definitions were added at the same time under chapter 801. Those included emergency equipment, which is a specific type of equipment utilized under trucking terminal under the LI permission of the use. So that undermines the applicant's assumption that trucking terminal is only referring to general transport vehicles. So also when we are looking at uh, use determinations, we are to look at other similarly uh, zone properties or properties that are considered trucking terminals. So I've included 
some aerial reviews and addresses for those properties so that you can see in the past uh, several years what we've determined to be a trucking terminal. And uh, there are some similarities between these site plans or these aerials and what we were submitted under the use determination. So this is 2150 North Angelina Lane. We have 4672 West Myrtle Pike and 6330 West State Road 48. So just a few examples I pulled from the last 10 or so years. So the commonalities for each of these sites include area for semi-truck parking, that is gravel, building, office space, small vehicle parking separated from heavy equipment parking. And these sites also appear to uh, similar in use to what is proposed under the use determination. So in conclusion, uh, the site is zoned general industrial and has been determined to be a trucking terminal based on the information submitted. Um, trucking terminal is not permitted in the general zoning district. Uh, the applicant was offered the option of rezoning the property to heavy industrial, but instead is filed for an appeal. The applicant does not address how the use determination submitted in 2022 is different from the prior use de determinations for this site at 5220 Production Drive, where it was previously determined as a trucking terminal. The 1238 North Loesch property itself is surrounded by other industrial type uses and possibly could support a heavy industrial rezone, but to date that has not been pursued. So I've included at the end of the packet some of the uses that are permitted in general industrial. And um, you'll see that the uh, general contractor and the trucking terminal uses are not permitted in this zone as of now. So I can take any questions or refer to Dave if he has any. Well, that was a very great presentation. Thank you. Um, do you have questions for Ms. Nestor Jellin or Ms. Mr. Schilling? If there are none, I'm going to turn to the public to see if there are members of the public who would like to speak in favor of this um, appeal. And if so, please raise your hand or press star nine on the telephone. There's no one I'd like to- uh, There's ask. one person, okay. Dave. Okay, Mr. Dave, would you please state your name and raise your right hand? and swear to tell the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. I don't think we can hear you, Dave. Yeah, we can't hear you, Ms. Mr. Dave. It, maybe you have to unmute yourself. If you're on a telephone, it would be star six to unmute yourself. Tech services, do you have any um, ideas for Dave to proceed? He is currently unmuted. Okay. Um, Chelsea, do you know who this person is or could they be called and voice their opinion over the phone? Um, I do not know for sure, but let me look at my notes real quick. Um, I don't think I have a phone number for anyone. Okay. Um, so if you could press uh, star six on your telephone to unmute or raise the volume or uh, click unmute on your computer. I'll also put the phone number for um, calling into Zoom into the chat. And that way, um, they okay. can phone call in. Okay, well, while this is worked out, I'd like to ask if there are members of the public who are here to speak in opposition to this petition. If so, please raise your hand on Zoom or press star nine on a telephone to speak in opposition to this appeal. Okay, I don't see anybody. Um, and we'll just see if um, Mr. Dave can be unmuted. Okay. 
I've put the information for how to call and enter in the meeting ID on the screen. Yes. Thank you for that. Yeah. So we'll just give it, uh, I, you know, I'd like to give it one minute um, and then we'll uh, turn back to discussion among the members of the board and uh, see if the person can be unmuted or able to speak. Because it, it, we're told he's unmuted, so it must be a microphone problem. Okay, um, to, to um, my esteemed colleagues on the board, uh, do you have any questions about this for staff or discussion among ourselves? I guess uh, I have a question. Uh, yes. Uh, so they were the applicant was offered the option of rezoning, and was there a reason they didn't want to rezone, or what is the logic behind that? Is that a question for staff? Yes. Or? I'll ask you. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, that's okay. Um, I'm not 100% sure, Vicki, but it may have been just a, a time, a question of how long it takes to do an appeal versus a, a rezone, but okay. the appeal is really a, a separate process. It's not like getting a variance. It's a very different uh, procedure. So a rezone is really the proper way to go for uh, meeting the zoning requirements. Okay, thank you. Okay, and had, did we have I see any? The, I see the phone number um, that may be calling in. So if tech okay. services, if you could unmute that number. Thank you. And then it's star six on the phone, yeah. Do unmute. Yeah, so can you hear me? Yes, Mr. Dave, if you would please uh, state your name and raise your right hand and swear to tell the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth, we'd be grateful. Dave Burt. Dave Burnworth, I swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, and I apologize for the uh, barriers to uh, logging in to the uh, Zoom meeting. Well, thank you for your patience, and we apologize, too, that it was difficult, but, uh, you know, we, we got some things done while we worked it out, so... Yeah. I heard that. So if you would um, be so kind as to share with us your thoughts. I just noticed on the GIS map how much industry and other industrial uses are in that area. And I think that this is worthy of a rezone uh, myself because Young Trucking does a, a heck of a lot of business in Bloomington and Monroe County and the surrounding counties. And I think they need to be treated fairly in this, but I understand they could have requested a different classification, everything, but I just, I would like to take some load off of them, if you would, of uh, just allowing them to have this property uh, used as they desired. Oh, thank you. Those are good insights and we appreciate you sharing your opinion with us. So um, I'm going to bring it back then to the board for um, just, a, I have a, a procedural question then um, to, uh, to Jackie. Uh, sh should we hear a rebuttal from Ms. Moss, uh, Jackie or Dave? Yes. No, traditionally, yes. So Ms. Moss, let's hear your thoughts since your hand is raised. Yes. Um, so what I'd like to say, uh, there, there were a couple things, um, that were brought up. So one was the, the question of why we did not pursue the rezone. Um, frankly, the rezone is a much more complex and time consuming matter. Um, I've been in rezones that take, you know, six months to get through all of the, the hoops and hurdles. Um, and this is a project that they are wanting to get started on the summer and um, be able to, to get rolling on. Um, the second is the fact that we were really taken aback by the fact that it wasn't an approved use since this conversation had already happened a few years ago. Um, and as I stated, we honestly wouldn't have been submitting a use determination if I'd realized that one had already been completed. Um, and 
all, although I understand um, Jackie and Larry's point on the that that use determination also listed trucking terminal. It used to, listed trucking terminal as a subuse under the business industrial center. Um, and so the business industrial center would have been the use and that's why it was not requiring a rezone at that point in time. Um, the way that use determination was written, the next step was going forward with site plan approval, which is the conversation Greg had had with Carly at that point in time. Um, there had been no discussion of going through the rezone process at that point. So that, that is why we're, we're taking this appeal process because we were really taken aback by that. As far as um, with respect to the other property, honestly, Use determinations um, up until here recently um, had been kind of hit and miss and formalities at times. And you wouldn't appeal, there was no need to appeal the use because it was an approved use. So it wasn't like a red flag to my client at the time. I was not involved with the use determination on that project. Um, but it wasn't a red flag, wasn't an issue. And so it wasn't pursued. Um, I remember having the conversation with him at that time of trucking terminal. Yeah, that's, that's what they told me it was, but you know, in the, the uses I needed anyways were allowed. It's not a big deal. Why, why would you fight something unnecessarily is essentially kind of where that fell. Um, it, was not that we were agreeing with that use at that time. Um, lastly, I wanted to bring up um, the concept of the uh, a general contractor. Um, so building trade shops, I believe references, I wanted to see this. So one of the, usage uses in 802 um, under the sorry I'm orienting myself over here um, under manufacturing mining construction and industrial uses one of the use descriptions is a general contractor um, and if pull this up here. The general contractor um, is, in, is a permitted use in both the light industrial and heavy industrial. Now this project, this particular pro property falls under the 833 guidelines, um, but those do reference some of the um, 802 definitions. And your definition for general contractor is an individual who contracts to perform work or to provide supplies on a large scale or an individual who contracts to erect buildings. And that's pretty much the exact definition of what Young Trucking does. Um, again, they're not just shipping things. They're not hauling freight everywhere they are providing a service via their trucks and their equipment and um, their contracting capabilities for construction projects, erecting buildings and large scale supply, uh, supplying of dirt material in, in many instances. Okay. Well, thank you for your explanation and your further elaboration and rebuttal. And um, we appreciate the time and attention you gave to that. So um, I'd like to turn it back to the board then for further discussion. I'm, um, this is a tough one. <laughs> you know, this is a tough one. So um, I, gonna, I have another question. Yes. For uh, Ms. Moss. Um, the um, where are they, the, the uh, address they're currently operating at? Uh, can they continue the business there until this could be rezoned 
to the new address for the new address. Ms. Moss? Um, I'm going to defer that question to my client. Um, I believe Greg is um, on and watching. Okay. Greg, could you um, chime in on that particular one? Uh, Mr. Greg, if you're here, could you um, please state your name, raise your right hand, and swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Greg, you'll have to unmute. Greg, if you are looking at the Zoom screen, um, I'm going to press ask to unmute. It should pop up and just say unmute. You have to click on that. Or you can, I believe, hold down the space bar. Oh, fancy. I didn't know that. <laughs> are you able to unmute? Tech services, is there anything we can do for Greg? Not on our end. Okay. So it's um, press the unmute, the space bar, or star six if you're calling in on a telephone. And I can put the uh, number back up on the screen. Okay. Greg, if you have uh, the other buttons to press is the Alt, A-L-T button and the A button, at least if you're on a PC. He's going to try calling in, Jackie. Okay. Sorry, I don't have any more tr tricks. <laughs> You've got a lot of tricks up your sleeve, Jackie. <laughs> now I know who to ask technical questions to. <laughs> it's Google. <laughs> While Greg calls in, is there um, any other questions that the board has? Well, I have one, and that is, is there any kind of, uh, um, from your perspective, any other um, kind of uh, policy um, kind of design? Can we create, like, we can either, without disaffirming the, um, the director's uh, determination, could we allow like a use variance until they get it rezoned or is that just too tricky because of, uh, we don't know if the rezone would work or could, I, I, you know, I, it's important. I think if um, the property is going to be used that way that it be zoned properly, you know, and I know that sometimes the public doesn't understand that that's uh, really our purpose here is to make sure that uh, the zones are in line with uh, the goals for the community. But um, we also recognize, I think, the importance of continuity of business and uh, the burden that this might place on a, a valuable uh, community commercial interest. So, uh, you know, we'd like, I wonder if you have any ideas on how uh, this, we could have a win-win. Um, I do see that I believe Greg is, is on the line now and I would maybe defer to Dave about questions on a use variance since we're in the appeal uh, request. I don't think that the BZA can act on anything other than the appeal tonight. I see, I see. 
Okay, so Mr. Gregg, if you would uh, please state your name and raise your right hand and swear to tell the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. And this time it'll be star six, right, Margaret, to unmute yes. on the phone? Star six on the telephone. Right. Okay, can you hear me? Yeah, yes. welcome. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, my name is Gregory Ross Young, and I swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Thank so you, Mr. God. Young. Thank you, Mr. Young. That's nice. Thanks for all the effort and that you made to uh, speak with us tonight. So we're anxious to hear from you. Well, I want to thank everybody uh, for their time this evening and reviewing our request. Uh, this, as you know, this started four years ago when I sat down with Carly Peterson in her office and explained to her not only this property, but some other properties I was looking at at the time. And I told her my exact plans, what our company was all about. And it's no different today than it was four years ago. And so we'd done a use determination. I had forgotten all about it until I seen it in this packet, to be honest with you. And uh, so they approved it as a general contractor slash trucking terminal business center, if I remember right. Uh, the type of work we do is a little different. My competitors that you spelled out here in the agenda tonight, um, we, uh, for the most part, we own every load that we haul. I buy and resell materials. Um, I-69, for instance, every bit of the rock under that highway down through there, except for about one phase from uh, 231 to Bloomington was rock that Young Trucking sold. So we do a lot of contracting work. I do. I'm just a little different. I'm not just a dump trucker. We do a lot of different things, and and I have uh, approved way sites. We have approved borrow sites uh, that we feed end up projects with, and we dump projects uh, continually uh, from IU City of Bloomington and you know Monroe County and all the surrounding counties. So we are so excited about getting a shop. My two boys work their butt off and they have nothing but a dump to work in for the most part. So this is a big deal to Greg. But uh, you know, we're a little different than a trucking terminal. Kehe operates a trucking terminal right next door to us and they got the same zoning. I don't quite understand how that works, but that's a trucking terminal. If you want to see a trucking terminal, so. But I'll be glad to take any questions. Uh, do members of the board have any questions for Mr. Young? Margaret, I have a question for Mr. Young. Yes. Um, this is Vicki Sorensen, and I have a question, just so I am clear on which address you're talking about. When you said you started four years ago, was that for the, the address that you're wanting to have uh, rezoned, or which address are you talking about? That's the address at uh, 1238 North Loche Road. Okay, thank you. I just wanted that to be clear which address you were talking about. Thank you. Yes, same address. Thank you, Mr. Young, and thank you, Ms. Sorensen. Well, um, I bring it back to the board for discussion and a uh, possible motion. I, um, I myself feel um, convinced by uh, Mr. Young's statements that the use determination was done with the help of the planning staff four years ago, that they're doing the same thing that they've been doing uh, all this time, and uh, they really don't need any hiccups in their um, in their uh, operations. And I would like to, um, even though we don't like to overturn uh, the use ter terminations by uh, our director, uh, to me, it seems like this is maybe even a better solution than a rezone because the rezone. Uh, could open, should the property change hands, um, other operations that we may or may not want there. So I feel that this might be a more elegant solution, but I'm anxious to hear from my colleague, Ms. Owens. 
Thank you, ma'am. Um, yeah, uh, so the discussion I just heard was this has been going on for four years. Why has it taken so long to get to this point? Can um, I can speak to that a little bit. Yes. So when, when Greg originally met with Carly four years ago, he was looking at purchasing property. Um, and he had several properties he was looking at and he talked to her about all of them. Um, what we, what Greg didn't recall and what I was unaware of was that she actually did use determinations for at least this one and the one on the south side of town. Um, but I was not aware that those were formal determinations, like I said, or we wouldn't have even gone through this process, but now we have a, a second determination on the same property for the same use. Um, and so he was looking at multiple properties and it has now come back to, this is the one we're moving forward with the property. It has just recently been purchased. Um, I believe that was purchased in the summer, correct, Greg? And uh, this past summer and uh, with the intent to go right into site design. And then we've hit this hiccup unexpectedly. Thank you. Thank you very much. And so having, having heard all and read all the evidence, um, it seems to me that it would be to the petitioner's benefit to get this properly zoned so that there's never any questions in the future. This is a new use for this property. It's not an existing use. Um, and so in order to get it all legal and all right, and I'm sorry it's taken so much time, I think that uh, that we should uphold uh, the director's determination and uh, suggest a rezone. And a lot of work has already been done. So it's not hopefully going to take as long as, as what a, a brand new uh, petition would. And everybody on the planning staff is familiar uh, with this particular uh, issue. So I think it should go forward fairly quickly. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Owens. So, um, yes, we um, yeah, I think I'll chime in one more thing because I don't feel like I got my answer on um, if if they can continue operation at their current address. Why this process goes forward to be rezoned? Um, then we're not disrupting their business, and I agree with uh, D that it'd be good to have everything legally laid out instead of piecing it together. And then we get another variance coming in. So uh, I just think we should uh, move forward for rezoning, asking for an appeal for a rezoning. Okay, well, is that a motion then? Um, or can you make a motion? I can make a motion. Okay. Uh, okay. On um, case ADR 21 1 at for 1238 North Lush Road, appeal of director's interpretation of proposed use at. I move that uh, they move forward uh, for a variance on rezoning at this address. Could, could I uh, make a friendly amendment to that, Vicki? Sure, sure. I think that I heard Dave say we're only allowed to vote at the appeal up or down and that the rezone oh, okay. is different. And I'm just suggesting okay. rezone as, did, uh, as did planning staff. So could I suggest that we just, uh, that the motion says that uh, you want to uphold the appeal, et cetera? Does that work? Yeah. Yes. Could I could I say something else here? Sure. Um, I, under general powers and duties, it says item B, we may reverse or affirm wholly or partially or may modify any order, requirement, decision or determination appealed from as in its opinion ought to be done in, in the premises and to that end shall have all the powers vested in the board from whom the appeal is taken. So, um, 
So that that just in case there are any modifications you'd like to make to um, your motion, uh, just as far as the determination is concerned, uh, I just wanted to make sure that you were aware of that on this appeal. And other than that, I appreciate that, Margaret. I guess uh, this is a kind of a difficult uh, motion and I wanna make sure the wording is correct. I don't know if I'm allowed to ask um, Mr. Schilling on the wording. Y yes, I'd be happy to, to, to assist you on that. I guess it, if the decision is, or if your motion is to affirm the director's decision, that that should be your motion. If you want to suggest or recommend that they continue with the a rezone, that's fine as well. But the uh, the uh, the the meat of the of the motion should address the director's decision. Okay, thank you. So I will go again with the motion. Um, I move uh, to affirm. Uh, to approve and affirm the administrator's determination. Um, and with a recommend, and am I allowed to put a recommendation here? Yes. With the recommendation uh, that um, young trucking pursue um, variance on rezoning for the new property. I'll second that. Okay. Uh, the motion has been moved and seconded to affirm the administrator's determination in case ADR-22-1. I can go ahead and call the roll. Vicki Sorensen? Yes. Margaret Clements? Um, yes, yeah, I'm going to vote yes, but I want to make a statement that I'm voting uh, yes because this will be the most expeditious route now for uh, young trunking to get their um, to get their desired outcomes achieved, and so I um, I'm sorry that uh, we have bureaucratic process, but I uh, we do appreciate you in our community, and we look forward to seeing you at the plan commission or elsewhere for um, for the rezone. So I but I wanted to thank them for all the effort and all the good work they do in our community. Uh, D. Owens. I'll second that and say yes. <laughs> okay. So the uh, administrator's determination was affirmed three to zero. So we're sorry it didn't work out like you thought, uh, Ms. Moss and Mr. Young. We're sorry, um, but uh, we're here to help you get this in compliance and try to make it as uh, as quick and as less least painful as possible, we hope. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. We'll be back. Okay, thanks. Okay, so um, we're back now to us. Is there any other business, Mr. Schilling or Jackie or Ann or Drew or? I have nothing to report. Okay, well then if no one objects, I, I think I'd like to move that we leave the meeting and adjourn. I will say just quickly, I think, Vicki, is this your last meeting with us? Oh, it is. Okay, oh, no. we wanna thank you, Vicki, for your service. I really, we really appreciate having you on the Board of Zoning Appeals and you will be, definitely be missed. So well, thank, thank you. you. I've learned a lot from all of you, so thank you. <laughs> I appreciate your insights and your good questions. Thank you so much. And I'm going to miss you. I wish we had had this time in person because it's just all virtual. But thank you for all you do. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Vicki. Thank you. And, and I second uh, Margaret Clement's motion to adjourn. <laughs> OK. Have a good night. And thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.